What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Coach Andy and I really appreciate all you listening and sharing the podcast. If you find what we're doing valuable here and you're interested in supporting the show, we just launched a membership website. We've got three different levels of membership that you can join. We're going to try to get you as many perks as possible for doing that, whether it's discounts on programs coming up, getting you involved with Q&As, or we've got some merch that we're planning on dropping soon. If you're interested in doing that, you can go to powertechhockey.ca. Enjoy the show, guys. I'm good to go now. Good. So I got a, I got something to be, before you bring up your shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not. A, it's not a big deal. It's just comments, comments, comments. Like, yeah. it's amazing. So the other day I was meeting with a, a couple, like a hockey family, mm-hmm. and uh, we're talking about the the draft, and they were you know agents and just you know, just the process and all that kind of stuff. So. The dad told me, he goes, you know, like, you didn't have this problem because I didn't even have to listen to the sentence. He goes, you didn't have this problem. More context you. needed here. Like, what were you guys talking about? Just, just what's this problem? What's he referring to? I don't know. I just, all I know is that this is the, the statement. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 He goes, you didn't have this problem because you have all these, conne- you have all the connections. Ah, so right, I didn't right, need right. to say no more. Right, right, right. I got you. So okay. I cut, I cut, I cut him off and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, I did not use one connection and I'm not really connected. He yeah. might, like everyone else goes, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. But I told him, like, th- there's no one's going to, dr- like, so my son was drafted very early. So a connection, no one's doing me a favor at that high of a pick. Yeah. Right? No. Does it ever happen? Yeah. Maybe, kind of, sort of, if you're drafted in the 13th round or late, mm-hmm. late, late in the draft. Like, someone might just say, I will take. We'll take a kid and, you know, some people get pissy about that and rightly so because people work hard for their opportunities and stuff. Yeah. But to say you use your connections, like it, it, it bothers me. Yeah. Not, I don't lose sleep, but the concept that people think that you have to have connections in order for your son to get drafted yeah. or to have an opportunity in hockey is is utterly ridiculous. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Like the, I know. The, the spot where a connection can be used maybe is if you're one of those borderline guys that may or may not get drafted that's the only time i've ever seen it where if you're like on the line of maybe you'll get drafted or not i've seen like someone's dad owns a team or like those kind of things but it's not frequent like it's not like it's happening left and right like it's very from at least from what i know like it's it does, it's not like oh you have a connection so you're all set like you're you're going to be fine because you yeah, have yeah, a connection that's, that's it's like that's point. not it's like that's not yeah. how it works. Like yeah. those are that happens f- infrequently. It doesn't have. It's not like it's a normal thing. And honestly, if I was to say I use connections, I, if I do, it's for other people. That's right. That is right. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that's right. Like I'll recommend someone because, like, like if I if I if I call someone and say you got to really watch my kid, like what? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. If I call and say, hey, my son, my son, my son, they're gonna be like, well, we watched them. We know. Like we know. Right. We got it. But but if I recommend someone and I and I I always say like try, I I believe in this person and here's the reasons why and they might know they might not they might take a chance but it's not going to be like a high pick yeah well that that comes more into when it's your job now right it's not really like it's not your job you're not an agent or a scout or anything no. but people ask you for your opinion Sometimes. pretty frequently so it's like so it's like that's kind of your job that's not using connections. Really, that's kind of part of your job. But it is right? a connection. But yes, it is a connection. But it's your job. It's yeah. not like you've went and networked just so you know people. Yeah. So you can. It's like you're in the hockey space. Like yeah. you are a notable. It's like saying a scout has connections. It's like yeah, they're a scout. Like yeah, that's yeah. their job, yeah. right? So there's a difference between that and kind of what more what I find that parents think is that you're you're because you know person X Y Z, they automatically have that assumption that you just can use that to your advantage and whatever. But we always, I talk about this a lot too, is like with scouts and with coaches and teams, like they're not stupid. Like they're not dumb. If your kid deserves it, he'll get it. If your kid doesn't deserve it, he won't. And unless you're a border, one of those borderline cases, which happens infrequently, you yep. know, that's, mo- that's mostly where that might play in, but it's still, it's not like it's frequent. It's not like that yeah. happens a whole, a whole lot. If it happens, even if it happens to, let's say 30 kids in the draft yeah. where 30 kids knew somebody or whatever, that's a full round, a pi- round and a half of picks. It's like, even if it was that much, which I doubt, but even if it was, like, that's not a lot. Like, yeah. That's not like that's happening a ton, you know? Yeah. So. It's funny when you're honest with people, too, because uh, they mentioned that uh, their agent, they have an agent, and then, you know, he said that he's able to make 
that their agent is able to make, uh, help them get drafted, you know, because they got a lot of connections too. And I said, okay, I'll be honest with you. I said, it's bullshit. And they're looking like, well, what do you mean? I go, it's, if, <laughs> just because we know each other doesn't, or you're an agent and I make a call that, hey, Eric, Eric is a guy you should draft, doesn't mean they're drafting you. Right. Has nothing to do with that. They have to like you as a player. Yeah, and that's what bothers me because that's what sets kids up for disappointments when people. And I'm not. I'm not at all blaming the family. Or no, whatever, they, they don't know they any don't better. Know. But p- people that are these low level agents that yeah. get some of these kids, like they promise them all this shit, and or they say all the right things to make them all excited, and then it just sets kids up to be to be upset because like, even if you get the kid drafted, like let's say even if you get him drafted, or you could get him 13th round, whatever, even though you told him eighth, it's like yeah. that's pretty disappointing. Yeah, you know, so it's uh, that bugs me too. I don't, that's it's annoying that that uh, that's a normal conversation or a normal comment that you have to deal with. It's, it, it happens all the time. Yeah. It's it's just funny. Like it, it's it's that's what I find the frustrating part about hockey, hockey parents. I guess it is is that they think it's about connections. And I mean, I probably would I would agree that if if you know people and you could say hi to someone that they it's a familiar face, maybe that helps. Yeah. Oh, I know your kid. Uh, it seems like a friendly dad. They don't care about the dad, but yeah. Maybe, maybe, but I, I don't think so. But it's funny how they think it's got to be, you know, the more people you know, the better chance you have. I know. Yeah, it's like at the it's end so of the day, funny. like you have to do the work yeah. and you're either going to get it or you're not. Yeah. And speaking of that, I'm going to go into my first thing here. Sure. Like doing the work and trying to set yourself up. So if you're this kid and you're trying to get drafted, at the end of the day, it's on you. So th- this kid that came in, we would talked about it a bit after. Good for him for coming in and actually listening and trying to get oh, yeah. himself prepared. Like, oh, it was a great, freaking we had awesome. a great talk. He was, he was sharp. Yeah. Sharp. Awesome. Man. Awesome on this kid for doing that and using you as a resource to help himself. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to talk about that a bit today, but yeah. I was looking at one thing that, that I think kids where they're missing, um, a potential opportunity to help themselves improve. I'll call it that is with social media. So I was looking at, Cause with TikTok and stuff that we're posting, I'm seeing like all the people that are following us and the odd time, like the person that comments or someone new who follows us or whatever, I'll click on them just to see their profile and see um, if they have any content or what kind of what they're about or whatever. And a lot of times I'll click on these profiles and they'll be following like 2,500 people, a thousand people. That's a lot. That's a lot of people to follow. So if, and if you're, you're on social media just for entertainment, purposes and you're not actually you don't care like that's fine this isn't a message necessarily for you but if you're a kid that's trying to get better or trying to improve themselves some way and that's who i'm primarily talking about people that are trying to get something out of who they're following you can't keep track of a thousand people worth of content you know so one of the things that i started doing when i started to try to get better and use social media as a tool to help myself get better is i would pick like tops 10 people to follow and i would religiously follow their content like people that i think are giving me good value yeah. for what yeah. they're posting i would follow maybe 10 and pay attention to what they're posting yeah because if you're following 2000 people or 1000 people and on tiktok now if you go on your for you page and you can f- scroll forever if you're following 1000 people or not for you page who you're following page you can scroll forever and you're never... Well, your day's good. over, right? That's you, I guess that's where you get caught. Right, so, right. so on TikTok, I don't know if you know this because you don't really go on a lot. I there's a, there's a page for following. like So it just shows you videos from people you follow. Okay, so if you have... A th- I'm just interrupting. If you've got 1,000 or 2,500 people that you're following... Impossible. You're just in a... That's you're right. in a You're swimming in an ocean of... Exactly, exactly. And right? At the end of the day, you're exhausted from nothing. Right. So my... They have if a, they care about that. Right, if they care about that. So they have two pages. They have the following page, so okay. it just shows you videos from people you follow, or a For You page, which is just random videos that'll just pop up based on what you watch. Oh, so it'd be like the algorithm of what you like. Exactly, right? So when you go on like the Instagram, the search page, whatever it shows you is based on that kind of thing. So you have this following page. So the For You page is going to show you the random crap anyways. You yeah. know. So don't follow so many people that you can't use it as a tool, right? So if you're going to let's say you want to be a better hockey player and you're going to follow two different trainers or three different trainers that you like a couple different hockey skills accounts, whatever the Toronto Maple Leafs NHL account or whatever, like pick 10 that you can actually keep track of because you're going to go on social media. Like all the kids are on social media all the time. Right. So use it to some degree, try to use it as a tool. Like this is something that can really benefit you. You're going to be connected to experts around the world at what they're doing, you know, and you can actually use it for, 
to give yourself knowledge or information or help you to learn things just while you're wasting time. As you're saying that, I'm just thinking of um, the traps that people fall in. And I, I don't... So anybody that thinks I'm talking about social media, I'm not. I don't even understand the stuff. But what I mean by that is you ever get... You ever read a book or you see... Okay, let's say social media, you see someone that sounds smart the first time, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if you take a little bit of information from them, it might be good. But sometimes the more someone speaks, the more you can realize that the less they know. Right. That there's just they're spewing a lot of garbage. So if you're if you're following uh, a thousand people, and you're just seeing little clips of the good. Right. No, even our podcast, right? I, I, I'm assuming yep. if you only see a, a clip of a 40 second clip and it's a good clip and all the other con- context, context. context is out, yeah. then you might be missing the actual good part or yeah. you might be looking, listening to that part, part and saying, oh, wow, those guys are really smart. But then if you listen to the stuff around, you might say, oh, actually, they're really dumb. Yeah. So if you're listening to a whole bunch of tidbits from 500 people or 1,000 people coming at you, you, you don't have a chance to decipher who actually has a brain. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. So like, I think, so your point being, if you watch, okay, uh, power tech online and you go for the skills drills, and you go, this is really cool when we show the clips, but if you go into a, a long version of our teaching, you say, oh, the guy's actually an idiot. But mm-hmm. you need that, like right. you said, follow it for That's right. one week to yeah. say, no, this they, these guys are sharp or, right. okay, the guy's just... He throws pylons out exactly. and does stupidity. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's what you're saying. Exactly. So, so, so I said the long way of saying that. No, no, you. Oh, that okay. was that was a good example. It's like I'm just contributing. Paint, yeah, painting yeah. the picture. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're painting the picture because that's that's what ends up happening, right? So what what people normally do, and kids or adults, you follow somebody, you first come across someone yeah. that you think you like or yeah. gives you something that you find interesting. Yeah. You follow them, yeah. then you start to see their clips a little bit more frequently. Then if you really like them, then you'll go looking for their clips. Yeah. So if you don't see one, you'll go look for it. Yeah. Then you'll start to click their website link and see what else they have yeah. and whatever. So this is how you start to get. But if you have 22,000 people you're following, you're never going to find that person that's good. And you're never going to find the people that aren't good. Yeah. Right? It's just a big mess of shit information that is coming at you and you have no way of parsing through it. Yeah. Right? So you're lifting weights and you're thinking, oh, okay, I got to do plyometrics and I got to do strength and I got to do speed. Like, and, right. like, and stretch and this right. and then you're confused. Right. Just a, a, a different type of example of that is understanding who you're listening to is like if you just take snippets then you can be really um sucked in yeah. so there's i was uh obviously um i like ufc a lot and i i like the sport um but i really like the mentality and the training that goes behind it so i i, I get involved in uh in learning a lot of it right not physically i don't beat people up yeah, you just like but like i it. like i yeah. like the mentality and, and like because hey man you're going in 50 in front of fifty five thousand uh people with a pair of underwear on and beat the shit out of someone or get the you know you, that's that's a in, incredible so there was one trainer that i was watching an interview on and it was not bad like i liked it but i i, I had a feeling he was a little kind of arrogant but in that sport kind yeah, of have, have that, to yeah. have some some confidence right yep. so He's and he's a nutritionist, and he was uh, he would he would dial down people's weight down and stuff like that, and they say like he does it really really well. Yeah, bought his book. Yeah, the, remember. remember that book? It's in my back car. I haven't burned it yet. I want to. It's it's legit the worst book I've ever had, and it was more expensive than any other book. But I said this will be good information. Yep. Bought this book. It had maybe three pages, and I'm not joking with the letter this big. Letters this big, like it was like reading uh, green, green eggs and ham. Yeah. With the letters that big, and maybe, maybe, and I'm being generous, probably maybe three pages worth of information on nutrition, and the rest was just all spewing shit. I was so pissed reading this book. Mm-hmm. But what am I going to do? Send it back? Yeah, right. And and complain? But I'm like, wow. Right. But this is what happens, right? right. If it, so, if I just listen to this guy's snippets here, then well, this guy's a jackass. Right. You know what I mean? hundred. Yeah. Well, so yeah. so. That's exactly what happens. So another example for us, like, so when sometimes people will comment on one of the podcast clips yeah, and they'll make a point that we have said in yeah. another clip. Right. So for example, the one I posted one yesterday and it was about um, our posture mechanics for skating yeah. and somebody made a comment about using your toes. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, like we, we, we talk said, about yeah, the toe yeah, thing in toe another, power. in the episode, we talk yeah. about it, right? So I click on this person's 
a profile and it was one of these like 2,500 people they follow yeah. and they don't even follow us. Right. So they just came across our stuff, made a passing comment without investigating the source and yeah. actually listening to the information. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, and like I said, if you're looking just for inter entertainment or whatever, that's fine. But yeah. if you, as a kid, you can use, it's a great tool. It can yeah. be a really good tool. So that's yeah. all. My point is just that, like use it to your advantage and have some precision with who you're following so that you're not just getting swarmed and overwhelmed by information because then you'll start yeah. to be learn some things and you'll make mistakes you'll follow the yeah. wrong person and get the wrong advice and all that kind of stuff yeah. but it's better than just aimlessly wandering around the internet with whatever crap comes your way yes you know what i mean yes so it's, it's good advice so i'm just I, I think you're concluding it yeah i was gonna shift I, to one it's more. very good advice and then again it goes to do you care? Is you are you watching social media for that? Um, if you don't like this part of our clip, then you know just turn it off. Yeah. But it's a very good piece of advice. It's declutter the brain a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I I started doing that from for myself. Uh, actually, just a couple of weeks ago, I was cleaning up some of like the podcasts that I follow because it's impossible to stay on top of all of it. Like, so I end up what I do when I listen to podcasts. My girlfriend's gonna laugh at this because I'll I'll and my family too. They, I listen to podcasts at two and a half times the speed. Mm -hmm. Which is not optimal. Which is not yeah. yeah. Which is not optimal for absorbing the information first of all, and I do it on purpose because I want to be able to listen to all the things I want to listen to. But it's too many things. Yeah. So I just kind of came to the realization again in the last couple of weeks, and I just cut out a couple that I'm not really super interested in anymore. So tighten it up for a bit, and then I'll expand out to something else as I come across new things. And it's just a good strategy. So one one example of that where things, this, something like this could be useful. I had a kid in here the other day and he was, he made a comment because uh, we haven't been in the gym a whole lot because everything's closed and whatever. And he was saying that it's so much better to be in here because he doesn't have as heavy of weights at home. Yeah. So I was, I'm like, okay, like, well, what do you have at home? Because even if you have nothing, you can still do something, yeah. but kids don't really know what to do. That's so right. he was saying that he has up to 45 pound dumbbells. And I'm That's like, a lot. That's a lot. Yep. That's what I said. I was like, you can do a lot with that. So I said, I made the comment to him here. I was just like, well, you can always, when, if you feel like you don't have heavy enough weight, just, you can add tempo to all your reps, yep. like do slower reps. Yep. And that will, that'll make 45 pounds feel real heavy. 100%. And he was kind of like, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> and like, this is the kind of stuff that you can learn, right? This is the yeah. kind of stuff that you can learn on social media because I'm just from me alone. When I post content, I give tips like this all the time, mm -hmm. adding tempo to your reps. All these little tricks that you can use just to give you bits of information to learn when you're at home. That's what my channel is for when I post exercise stuff. Yeah. So if you're one of these kids that just aimlessly floats around social media, now you just, you're just you missing something that was right in front of you or could have been right in front of you on social media just because you're drowning in information. You know. Yeah. So that, that type of comment, and I'm not saying the kid's an asshole or anything. He's just a kid. He doesn't know. But this is the kind of stuff you can start to learn. right? So don't come yeah. in and say, well, how do I make 45 pounds heavy? It's like, I could give you 16 different people on TikTok, which you're on for an hour a day that would have told you that if you were paying attention, you know? So the difference between like, we're, wow, it's so confusing for kids. Oh man, I know. The social media is so confusing for kids because like when I learned the really in-depth of fitness, I had to search for it. Like legit, search for it. For sure. So I would read magazines. I, I so bodybuilding, muscle and fitness. Uh, no, what's the other? Muscle media. These certain magazines were my start, and if and then you realize, okay, that was the social media, the best social media could be. Then you realize, okay, this muscle. F I, I'm not going to say the name. Maybe it's muscle fitness or what's the whatever that one. You start reading it, you go, okay. I don't know how much that sense that makes. It seems salesy. And then you realize, oh, it's a sales pitch. It's just filling articles. Who knows if, who, who it's even written by? And then I found a consistent writer, a couple of consistent writers, and one was named Charles Poliquin in, in, in media. And it seemed like he was very, very well respected. So then I, was, I would look, and then I, I found that he had some books. So I went and went, bought a couple of his books. And then I'm like, oh, these are gold, right? And and I I use it right today every day the principles of his uh, nutrition, and I veered off some, but the, it's such quality. The problem with the social media side is there's if you go on social media, you have everybody. It's like the girls that take you know I was I, I came out of a, a place the other day and a girl was in her car, and she was doing selfie stuff and she was and I 
I just looked. I go, what are you doing? Yeah. It happens all the time where you yeah. go to a restaurant and people are taking selfies of everything. But there's how many selfies to get that one pic that they're happy right. with? Yeah. With the duck lips. Yeah. and It's people's fake world. Yeah, that's right. So what you have to understand about the hockey accounts, the, the fitness accounts, the hot girl accounts, the, the motivational speakers that aren't a motivational speakers on, on social media, it's just there. So you're taking this stuff and you think, oh, that guy's got to be sharp because they're on right. social media that's or right. they're, they're jacked and look at the workouts. But you don't have zero context of why that's good. Yep. Right. Exactly. So you can watch it. And this is my thing with the hot. So sticking with the hockey pieces, this is why when I, when, when I happen to go through it and I see someone do a stick handling drill and it's in really good camera work and music and it's like kind of cool. Like if I'm a kid, I'm like, that's kind of cool. But now if I can step back and say, okay, so what, when am I going to use yeah, this? Is it why? Useful? Right. How? Yeah. Right. Cause everybody can be a, a, a guru now, mm-hmm. but, but you know, the, there's a lot of sizzle and there's not a lot of steak. Yeah, that's right. So that's the that's the dangers of social media. And there's like you said, there's a lot of good stuff to it. You can get good stuff. Like my wife, she's her cooking's never been better because she goes and finds these recipes. You hit the odd dud, but it's like some of it makes sense and it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's exactly what I'm pointing at because now, like you said, in today's day, because of the internet, we have the opposite problem. Whereas when you were trying to find information, yeah. you had to go find it. Yeah. Now you're getting smacked in the face with it yeah. every day, all day. Yeah. Like there's information overflow. Yeah. So before, somebody who's going to look for information, that that means that they already have some type of critical thinking. Yeah. So if you're going to try to find how to do something, then that means that you're you're already a thinker. You have to be. Mm-hmm. Right? So now with today, people that aren't thinkers yet or don't have that critical thinking skill developed, they're still getting smacked with information, regardless if they want it or not. Yeah. Before people were kind of shielded from that. If you weren't looking for information, you weren't going to get it. But that's now right. today you're just getting smacked with it. So for kids, yeah. that's why it's so important. We talk about it all the time that you have to have a brain. You have yeah. to be able to analyze things and think about things. Otherwise, you run in, you know, misinformation is a big word that people like yeah. to use now. You yeah. and you you'll run into that because how do you parse out what's what's good information and what's not if you're not critically thinking or looking into things? Yeah. To use your brain, you know. There, there was one guy, it was so funny Dalton was telling me. I, I happened to watch a couple of videos of this one guy who's a f- fitness trainer and jacked. And so here's the first thing. As you look at a fitness trainer, like I work with and you work with elite athletes and their bodies are a lot different than a lot of these social media dudes. Oh, yeah. And there's a reason. <laughs> the reason is, is because they're not on the same drugs, <laughs> right? So if you look at someone that's just jacked and, and you know, to get this six pack, to get this, to get that, yeah. do these exercises, like... Yeah, but you're not on whatever that guy is taking. So anyways, there's this guy I, I, I came across just a couple times and I was watching and uh, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. This guy's kind of plays a role. Maybe there's some good stuff or whatever. Turns out when Dalton got married, was friends with this guy's girlfriend in Arizona. And he was going to the wedding and Dalton was, this guy's coming. Yeah, you got to ever remember, hear of this yeah, idiot? I remember you. T- I so I go, what's I the name? And I looked, I said, I've seen some of his videos. He goes, Andy. He's totally jacked up on sh- on shit. He's so insecure and uh, and I guess dead broke. <laughs> but he's just like all jacked up. Treats his wife or his girlfriend like just garbage, and um, and it's like that's who you want to fall. Right. You know. Well, yeah, and, and that's on, why on the internet, the first first absolutely that you get me thirty seconds, I can impress you that's with right. my bullshit and the music and the camera angles and look at the veins and exactly. Well, on, so I'm lis- I was listening to this guy. Uh, <clears throat> A guy that I follow actually on TikTok, his name's Evan Holmes. Okay. He's a, got actually, I think he's got a really good, really good account and he's a bodybuilder guy. Okay. But he's a normal person. Yeah. He's not juiced up on steroids. He's not, he, he's big. Yeah. He trains like a bodybuilder. He yeah. trains like a power lifter. Like yeah. he trains for big lifts, heavy set, just sits and does four sets of this, four sets of this, four sets of this. And that's his workout. That's how he trains. But he's very, he's very smart and he does like, he's a research kind of guy. He's a, he's a mix of research and anecdote, right? Mm-hmm. Things that work in reality and yep. things that he finds reading science. And he made a, he had a good video the other day and he was talking about exactly this point. Just because somebody looks the part doesn't mean they know what they're talking about. Right. So he was saying that for bodybuilding, because that's his domain, he was like, some of these guys are absolutely jacked because one, they're on whatever gear they're on yeah. and two, they're have superior genetics for yep. what they're doing. Like most elite athletes, yep. Yep. whoever Usain Bolt 
I'm not saying he doesn't work hard. I'm not taking anything away from that okay. because I don't know anything about him or yeah. his training style. But he's got some genetics for running, man. Well, yeah. And and that's how it is in any sport. If you yeah. got whoever's the elite of the elite, there's a genetic component yeah. that they're just superior. Yeah, you're starting 100 meters ahead. And that does not equal knowledge. No. That does not equal you know what you're talking about necessarily. Right? Yeah. And that's why these people have coaches. That's why elite yeah. bodybuilders have coaches. Elite fitness people have coaches. Elite at any athlete in any sport has a coach because they don't necessarily know what they're supposed to be doing. They're just really good at doing it once they're told what to do. Yeah. And uh, Matt, is it Matt Fraser, CrossFit guy? Yeah. I was listening to his, he did a Joe Rogan podcast and I was expecting like gold nuggets left and right from this guy. Like he's the of fittest, yeah, fittest man on earth. Like he's won Several however times. many times in a row. The guy doesn't know anything, really? man. That's no, 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 exaggerating. Relative, relative. Like he, he knows how to train hard. He knows how to work, do his workouts and he knows how to put programs together and all that kind of stuff. But they started getting into talking about supplements and nutrition. And uh, he was talking about when he was learning how to run. And he, he made the statement, which is why I'm saying this. He was like, I don't care about doing everything exactly the right way I need to do it. I don't want to know all the detail about everything that I need to do. I just want you to tell me what to do. That's what I want. So they were talking about pre-workout stuff. And at one point, Joe uh, Rogan was asking him about why he takes certain supplements. And he's like, I don't know, man. Like I heard this and I take it and I like how I feel and whatever. Yeah. So like this is the fittest man on earth multiple times over. Yeah. And he doesn't know. He doesn't, he's not the knowledge base of everything. He's yeah. got coaches that tell him what to do. Yeah. He's got people that take care of that for him. So he can yeah. just focus on what he's doing. And GSP made the same point in his yeah. book, right? Yeah, he says cooking. He's like, I eat, I want to eat healthy. But if you ask me what to, how to cook and why to cook, I have no time for that. That's right. No time to learn it. I need someone to do it for me. Yeah. So that's that's my the point with the social media stuff. Filter. Right? Yeah. You Filter the to... brain so you're not clogged. Did you want, have anything else to say about the weights with the with the young guy? No, I was just using that as an example. Using that as an yeah. example. Why? Do you got something I want to throw no, on it? No. No. Because no. that's all I was going to say on that because yeah. it's it, it comes down to, we're going to talk about this more in a bit, but it's, it comes down to like being resourceful now, right? Yeah. Like you need to, and as a kid, you can start to do this. I know it's hard for kids and I'm, again, I, I throw this caveat out all the time. Like I don't feel like I'm expecting too much because we have some kids that do it. Like I have yeah. some kids that come in here and they ask the questions and they do the work and they try to do the research and they're not perfect, but they're trying to figure it out. Like I had one kid was telling me about his diet. And how much he's improved his diet. And I've made this, I've used this example before, but he's talking about what he's eating. And in my head, as soon as he tells me what he's eating, I'm like, well, you could eat this, this, and yep. this, and this would be better at this time and whatever. Yep. But he's made a big improvement from nothing, yep. you know? So like, I'm not going to piss on the kid, like yep. you say, right? I'm not going to do that yep. because he just made a big step forward. So yep. I see that kids are capable of doing it. And that's yep. why I want to like throw the message out because I know that kids can do it. Yeah. You know, so for ever, whoever takes the advice that and they find it valuable, like just start using it as a resource because it's really important to do that and then evaluate what the resource is that you're coming yeah. across. Well, the other side of that is that the, the kid will actually learn more by you not telling him. Yeah. Because he's going to maybe continue to eat and lose weight or get fatter or whatever. And he then he might come to you and say, well, I'm doing this, this and this and I'm not gaining or I'm losing. And then you can say, OK, like you can walk through it because that's what I do on the ice. Show. Let them do, let them fail, right. let them struggle through it, and then, then we fix it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good thing, right? Without you thinking about it and actually understanding the problem yourself, right. that's the only way you get deeper knowledge of it. Yeah. Well, so. and, and this is another Jordan Peterson thing. He talks about don't hijack people's problems. Yeah. Like you need to let people figure it out. So two, I got two examples. One is a kid that he was just in two days ago, actually, and he was saying that he always, he's been having like tightness in his hip and he gets knee pain when he does stuff. And I've been telling him like, okay, that's probably a range of motion or mobility type issue, but I'm not like, I'm not your physio guy. I don't know. Like that's better to talk to those guys about that. But that's what I would say. <clears throat> so yesterday or whatever he was in, came in and said, uh, he reminded me about, he's like, remember how I was telling you about my hip and my knee and how, um, I get like pains from, from certain movements, whatever. He's like, well, when I was laying down the other day, he's like, I noticed that my relaxed position on the left side is not the same as my right side oh, yeah? and i'm like freaking right man there yeah. you go like you're noticing step. it so you're saying that his hip kind of sits externally rotated by default huh. so his knee kind of rotates out yeah. when he's relaxed there you go and my other side doesn't do it and i'm like there you go you just you, you just found some kind of mobility limitation or something yeah. or our movement pattern or an overuse yeah. pattern yeah. that you fell into and now yeah. you can start to address it right so yeah. good for him yeah 
but you can't overwhelm the system, right? Like if I go day one and tell him 15 different things that he could do, and that's that's a criticism that um, people might give to trainers sometimes. Like, well, why aren't you correcting this, 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 and this? And you, I'm sure you get the same thing on this. Like, well, I can't do all of it now. It's too much information. Like, you got to give him one, let it marinate, like you said, and then let him let him um, fix it. So that's that's uh, that's all I wanted to touch on with the with the social media thing. And I think the it's going to kind of bleed into some of the other stuff today. You made a comment last week. Um, You're talking about the the Messier book. Yep. And you were talking about Gretzky after that a bit. And you were yep. saying how people put ceilings on themselves. Yeah. And I want to get your thoughts on this one too, because there's a difference. I was thinking about it a lot after because it was, it was good. And I went and watched that Gretzky interview too that I want to talk about in a bit. But there's a difference between putting a ceiling on yourself or not putting a ceiling on yourself and being naive about the reality of whatever it is you're trying to do. So, for example, when we when we talk about not putting a ceiling on yourself, it's like, okay, if you want to be a hockey player, you can be a hockey player. You know, you have to do what it takes. You have to do all these things, and you can't think you can't do it because if you think that, you won't do it. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between that and then just saying, I want to be a hockey player and leave it at that kind of thing. You know, so there's a level, certain level of, there's a balance or a fine line between, you know, capping yourself and being realistic, you know? So I just want to get your thoughts on that one before I go off on another yeah, I'm torn between it. That's right. I'm torn between it. It's a fine it. line, right? Well, because Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> I guess he was dys- dyslexic. Dyslexic? Dyslexic. Yeah. And he had a lot of issues. And he lost every... When he tried getting in politics and even for council and stuff like that in Illinois, he 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 was like not the guy that could do it. He became the president and arguably the greatest president in American history and did wonderful things. So the point is, is that if 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 Abraham Lincoln and this is I'm, I, I'll get away from him in a second because I don't know enough, but I the stuff I've read. If he listened to the people say, well, you can never be the president of the United States because of the, because, because, because then, and he was not a candidate for that. If you looked at his life. So if he listens, if he listens to that, then that, and maybe he didn't want to be the president when he was younger, but he ended up being one. So it's like, who is the person to say, and when do you put the cap on what is, is achievable? Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. So it's really, really, really hard. Like, it's really hard. Like, so in the hockey world, I just think of, like, I wrote a couple of names down. Like, Gretzky was actually too small to be in the NHL. That's yeah. what everyone said. Oh, what was he, 140 when he turned pro? when he was a pro. Yeah. He was too small. So they said. Yeah. So, like, if you put the cap and, and if everybody agrees, yeah, he's too small, he's going to get killed. He's good, but he didn't even consider that. He said, I was smarter than them. I have another way of doing it. So is it right to say, I mean, incredibly talented, obviously, right? If you take Ty Domi, heavyweight in the NHL, like he didn't know he was too small to be a heavyweight. He was 5'9". Who, who decides what the cap is? That's my question. Um, my b- good buddy, uh, well, let's go... Let's stay here. Gallagher is too small. Can't play like that way in the NHL, but he does. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I, that's yeah. I don't know. Like I, I, I think if you can't skate whatsoever and you have don't have an athletic bone, I, I mean, you're probably being unrealistic. Like there's got to be some, but the belief in yourself is something. It's a really hard thing to do. But like, yeah. see, the, the point of this, I, I, give me a couple more. Here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my buddy Paul DiPietro, he's a good hockey player. But I remember we were sitting in the dressing room, and it was my last year of junior, and the university coach came in and wanted to talk to the guys, and kind of do a sales pitch for the Canadian University and how it's going to benefit you. Right when you're done here, instead of going to play in the East Coast and making twenty thousand dollars or eighteen thousand dollars a year and prolonging the inevitable for most people, and that's the reality. He was, very, he was right. Yep. He goes, "Why don't you take a look at getting your education? Your the team pays for it and all that stuff." And he goes, "Like." Someone like Paul, so my best friend, Paul DiPietro, someone like you, Paul, 
Because you're like you're you're probably too small to play in the NHL. And Paulie lost it on him. Called him old man, throwing stuff. He goes, Don't tell me I can't make it. Paulie played in the NHL. And he had a long year, long uh, career in Europe after that. Played for the Leafs, played won a Stanley Cup with Montreal, played in Los Angeles. Like, who says that I can't? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do. Barack Obama becomes a president. You weren't supposed to be a black president. That was impossible. Mm-hmm. At some point, in his, he's a brilliant guy, apparently. Oh, well, no kidding. Yeah, no kidding, yeah. <laughs> but he's, I guess he's brilliant. Yeah. But for someone like that to say, I'm going to be the president of the United States, like a, a, a black, first black president of the United States, said, no, you're not. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. But he was. So belief, uh, what I wrote down is that belief is actually not the word, but I read this a long time ago, that faith is the evidence of things unseen. And that's what I, I, that's what I believe belief is. What you have in your head is, a, is, is evidence in your head of things that have not been seen yet. And it's not enough to believe. Yes, this is why you I have to do the to work. Yeah, okay, this, that's okay. This is it's exactly, not enough to believe because you can believe in anything. It's just some some things you have to you have to do the work. But what happens when your belief in yourself and belief in your vision is a true belief? Then basically, because it'll be hard. Basically, every action you take within reason is going to be moving towards that belief. Even when you come across the shit sandwich today or this week or this month or this year or the next two years or five, you're going to still do it because you see what you're going to believe. And I'm not trying to be hocus pocus. I'm not doing that because that, because if you're, if you're just doing that, then talk's cheap. But if you actually put the effort required and do whatever it takes to do a thing, you have a, you have a chance. And then the second part of that is that yeah, I've heard this several times too. If you're reaching for the moon, but you hit the stars on the way, that's not bad either. But it's an unwavering belief in yourself, and what happens is you you act accordingly. And if you do that for a long period of time, and you see, like, and you don't understand when someone tells you that you can't do something or that no, you can't. Like people, every everyone that goes to school, man. My son, me, Polly, Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall was in high school, and they said, well, what if hockey doesn't work out? He goes, what are you talking about? Like, it doesn't cross your mind. It's plan A, and I'm all in, and I'm really, really good. Shut up. Yep. Leave me alone. And you do the work to go with it. So it's tricky. It's yeah. tricky because you can fool yourself into believing. And if you're going, you know, like I was turned on to a book called the, not the experiment, the secret. And it was, uh, a hockey team used that for a bit. But when I read it, I'm like, well, no, that's not how it works. Like, like okay, I, I understand bullshit and I understand reality. This guy said he wrote a picture when he was a little kid and he moved, blah, 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 doing work and he was having some success. And then the next thing you know, he pulled out this picture and he was actually living in this house. Okay, yeah, whatever. Right. That's that's okay. Put the book down and shut up. But anyways, I digress or... No, no, that's bang exactly why I brought this back up because we were talking about it last week and when I, when I walked away from the podcast, I was kind of thinking about it for the next couple of days and I was like, where, like, how do you draw the line between... My brother has a saying. He talks about when, uh, when people are just kind of like going through their life not really paying attention to anything. He says they're with the fairies. <laughs> that's what my brother says, yeah. which is hilarious. So he'll say... You're with the fairies, like you're not living yeah, in reality different world. kind of thing, right? And I think of that when people believe but don't take the action. Yeah. That's what I think. That's when, when yeah. you're with the fairies when you're doing that. Because yeah. sometimes I'll get messages from kids and no, it's no offense to the kids or anything, but I'll get like, I had a message one time, kids like, oh, I'm 20 years old. There isn't really much hockey around where I live and I, I've played double A my whole life, but I really, really care about being a hockey player and I really want to do my best to try to make it. It's like, yeah. hey man, like that's great if you want to do it. But dude, you're 20. You've never played travel hockey, and like you already could be in the NHL at your age, right? Yeah, it's a late so, start. So, that's, so it's not. It's just not. It's just not reality. It's just not reality. Now, there is something to be said for well, if he really puts the work in and he really believes that he can do it and whatever, maybe one day he could get there. Fair enough. So unlikely. Yeah, prove, prove us wrong. Like prove for sure. it. And that's and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying prove it. And this is where 
the difference would be if this kid messages me and asks me for help and then I tell him what I think and then he disappears and I never hear from him again. Yeah. It's like, you're not living in reality, yeah. bro. If yeah. you message me again and then you ask me again and then you ask me again and then you go and find two other people to help you and th- now you're doing the work, right? Yeah. And that's only yeah, you're that, doing it in between shooting pucks or doing reps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. And that's that's why I wanted to bring it back up, because there's a difference between putting a ceiling on yourself and living in reality. But the, the key is that if you're going to not have a ceiling on yourself, it has to be plus the action part. You can't just sit there and think one day it'll work out. It's like, no, man, you have to do all of the things you can do to give yourself the best chance because it still might not work. Yeah, And you look at this when you have that belief system in yourself and you have that dream and you have that goal and this is what I want to do. It's action, man. That's right. It, and, and and the thing is, is that it's action and you see where you're going to be and you're going to go through it. But that's what I was saying. It's like, it's not the connections. Yeah. Dad doesn't need to make connections now. No. I'll do it. I will get there. Right. The connections aren't the thing that's going to get you there. Yeah. And if you're going to, if it is connections, you'll find them because mm-hmm. you're going to impress someone so much on what you do. It's, it's not, obstacles that get in your way are not going to be the thing that holds you back. You're just looking at the vision and you're going, okay, I got to knock this one down. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to be a ridiculous amount of work, but that, and you're going to see progress at some point. And there's going to be days where you're going to say quit and you, and you, and you, you redo it again and you just, you keep moving, but it's not the connection. It's not all the fluffy shit. It's literally working your ass off yeah. harder than anybody else. Yeah. And that, that's, the, that's the important thing. It's not the just believe it and it'll happen. No, it's not. It's all about the action, man. It's all about the yeah. action. It's like if you, you need to think you can do it, but if you're not, and that's why I wanted to bring this back up because a lot of kids listen to the podcast and I don't want you to walk away thinking it's enough to just believe it. Like you have to do it every, you have to do the action or you won't get the result. And that's where, as you just said, like it's not, I'm not trying to sound woo woo or whatever about the belief thing. It only works if you have the action and that's where it brings you back down to reality. Now, now people don't think you're unrealistic or people, if you come in here, I'm the first guy. I'm all about being realistic, man. Like you've said, your Christina said about both of us, the, the pragmatic nature, right? Yeah. We're all about what's going on in real life. Like that's what we're all about. Yeah. If you come in here and tell me and same to you, I want to play in the NHL. It's like, okay, man. Yeah, we'll see. Move along. We'll see. That's exactly what I think. Yeah. We'll see. But if you come through that door every single day, yeah. I totally will take you serious. Yeah. I will totally take you serious. And I do that yeah. with, there's very few yeah. that actually do that. Uh, well, I was, so I was thinking of an example here and, and don't mean to beat a dead, hor- dead horse yeah. here, but like just to dumb it down for people, hockey's a big, there's a lot of shit going on, but every, nah, maybe not everybody, but most people want to look and feel their best. True? Yep. Okay. Most people buy gym, gym memberships. Why? Like people disguise it, right? I just want to feel mentally healthier yeah 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 yeah. let's just face it for what it is but anyways when someone anybody can get actually jacked anybody could look like like a movie star yep. like when they're all trained up and stuff but the thing is is that you buy the membership and it's like people do it on january 1st every year or they talk and they buy the membership and i'm going to do the work and i'm going to do this this and this and this and then they may buy the membership and they may never because they talk themselves out of it but when they do they go to the gym and they push to a certain degree and then they come home and then maybe they're eating a bag of Doritos. And then after a little bit of a period of time, the results aren't there. Well, you're not doing all the work. It takes more than just, you know, when I show up to a garage, it doesn't make me a car. That's right. When you go to a gym, it doesn't make you a fitness model. Yep. Right. It takes a lot of discipline, hard work and all those things. But if you really, if it's an actual goal that you want to get jacked, then when you, after a month or a week or whatever, you evaluate your workouts, you evaluate how you're going. Your, your weight's going up, weight's going down. You're looking good, good, looking bad. And then you start tweaking and you go backwards. Okay, I ate this, I ate this. I didn't work out here. I could push harder, whatever, all this stuff. And yep. then you start putting it together. The next thing you know, if you actually care and want to have that and believe that you can do it, blah, 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 blah. Right. Next thing you know, you look like a million bucks. Totally. But most people go give it a give it a college try and get the hell out and then yep. make more excuses. As I always say, more excuses than a pregnant nun. That's right, man. So they... That, that's exa- that's bang on, man. Like that, you always say talk is cheap. That's holy. That is my talk is everything. That is my fucking people. Oh, dude, like that is my my one of my biggest freaking annoyances is when people talk about the things they want to do. It's like tell me how much you want to do it, man. Yeah. Go do it, man. Go yeah. do it, and then yeah. we'll then we'll talk about it. Like yeah. I don't want to hear your crap. If you actually want something, go and actually do some kind of action to progress. Yeah, you don't need a cheerleader. No. 
You just go do it because you want it. Yeah. Because you said you want it. Yeah. You know? So that that was why I wanted to bring that back up because I don't want to forget that action part. So I was I was uh I listened to the Gretzky interview. Yeah. That you mentioned last week. So oh, good. By the way, yeah. I'm gonna start so I have the podcast episodes up on the website now. They're all listed up there. So what I'm gonna start doing is when we mention things, I'm gonna link to it oh, right. on the on the website page now. So it won't okay. be in the YouTube thing or whatever. You have to go to the actual website. I'll put the links to stuff and books and whatever we mention that's worth looking into, I'll put I'll put it all there. So Okay. Uh, reason I'm saying that the Gretzky interview, I do have it there. So the link to the interview for anyone that's interested in it uh, is there. So great interview. Oh my God. It was exactly as you described it. Cause even though you told me that it was going to be good, yeah. I was still like, yeah, yeah. Like it's going to be good. Well, but, I was hoping but, I didn't just get caught in the moment either. That's right. So I watched it after I watched Charlie's game actually the other day and uh, holy cow, man, freaking awesome interview because like you mentioned, it's, it was a couple layers deeper than tell me what you ate before your game questions you know yeah so i want to get i want you to say again just what you from what you remember of it a couple of your highlights from it because i want to bring up my highlight of it what i thought yeah so with gretzky's podcast i mean if i can remember it i was i I was just so impressed i always thought that he was always saying these things just to try to sound humble because he was so great but when um i saw this interview it was in a different setting and they're asking him a question, and he just has the, the mindset of a winner, period. But the beautiful thing is, like, he is actually so humble. So humble. And I, loved, I love his mind, like, how he, how he thinks. And he's so unselfish and uh, all about team. He, he deflects a lot of stuff because he truly believes that um, it, it takes um, – it, it wasn't just him. So the ego was the ego is small. He's very humble. Uh, his mindset was in, is incredible. Like he's just got the winning mindset. That, yeah. Some of the stuff that I <clears throat> maybe wrote down or talked about last week. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking too much about it right now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. And it's out of my mind. But uh, I, I love the interview. So f- from so from the points that you made last week, um, I had a couple different the two that I, two points that I pulled out that I really liked. They were yeah. different than yours, but the one that I. The first one is the easy one. So at the very end, he was asked, what advice would you give to the like average Joe person that's trying to do something special? Yeah. What, what would you say to them? And he gave like the, a good, good answer, but it was expected. Just you got to check your ego at the door answer, right? There's no place for ego. Mm-hmm. Um, you were talking about his answer when he said that, you know, jealousy is a cancer. Yeah. And that was one of yours. And the other one, he was talking about the best athlete ever. And he mentioned the horse the secretariat. Yeah. Um, so the two that I pulled out was the ego and one. And he's such a sports geek. He, yeah, and he sports pulled geek. from all kinds of things. And, and, and that was the other thing is that I hope people get out of that if they do listen to it, is that they, it's, it's a mindset. He would watch a tennis match and pull shit out from there of a winning attitude or the competitive attitude or yeah. whatever. And he yeah. respected those people so much. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, that comes back to the resources thing, right? Yeah. He's being resourceful, learning what, what he can from where he can. But so he, he mentioned the ego thing at the end, which is an obvious one. Like there's no place for ego when you're trying to become good at something because you need to learn from everyone. And there's people that are way ahead of you no matter what you're doing in yeah. whatever area you're doing it. Yeah. So that was the one. But the more interesting one, and this is the one that I wanted to talk about for today, is the question that um, Patrick Bet David is his yeah. name now, I remember. Yeah. Um, he asked him, when you see a young player can you tell that they're going to be a hockey player or not? Just something along those lines. Yeah. And he said, oh, I can tell in three seconds. Yeah. And the guy was kind of surprised. He was saying like, what do you mean you can tell in three seconds? Well, it's like kids have a look. Like they carry themselves. They play a certain way. They have a certain presence on the ice. We like to use yep. that word, presence yep. on the ice. And you can tell like this kid's got a, got a legit shot at being a player. But he was kind of talking about more the physical yeah. side of it when he just watches them play. Yeah. So the follow-up question was, are there certain like red flags or attributes that you, you can see, whether it's an attitude or whatever, away from the rink where you can say, now nah, this kid's not going to do it. never make it. Yeah. And he had an inter- interesting answer yeah. because my initial impression of that question is just like, well, if the kid's got a shit attitude, then yeah, there's no chance. Yeah. But, but Gretzky's answer was, I never hold attitudes or behaviors to kids. I never think that they are stuck with that because kids change can change so much yeah. and your attitude can change and your behavior can change. Yeah. And that was a, that was a good answer because that's, yeah. that's, that is right. And I hadn't, yeah. I didn't think of it in those terms. I kind of would be like, Oh, this kid's got an attitude problem. He's a write off kind of thing. Like the, you, you're, that kid's going to be, you know, a cancer in their dressing room, 
shit guy, selfish, whatever the word is. But kids can change, man. Yeah. And people can change. Yeah. It's not just kids. It's everyone yeah. can change. And so that was probably my favorite part of the podcast when he was talking about that, because a lot of kids I think can relate to that or just people that are trying to change behaviors. It doesn't even have to be a hockey thing. But yeah. if you I had a, a nice message from a kid the other day, he was talking about, uh, I forget which podcast it was. It was a few back. We were talking about body language and how body language is such a bad, if you have bad body language, it can be such a negative. And I had a kid message me and he was saying, oh man, that podcast was really helpful because I know I struggle with body yeah. language and I'm trying, I'm trying my best to change it. Yeah. And that's, that's what the beautiful thing is, is you can change it. Well, and like you said earlier, he recognizes that he needs to change it. Yeah. And that's the number one thing, right? Alcoholics, the b- biggest change to addictions and stuff like that. Not that I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. this is from what I've read and stuff like that is understanding that you have a problem. Once you, once you have a problem, if you're willing to address and work through it, then that's where your biggest changes are made. And you take an alcoholic or something like that. When they make that, when they make that change, we recognize it, do the work to get out of it. Their life is a whole different lifestyle Yep. and they're better for it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And, and yeah, you look at an attitude like, and, and, and I think that's a very true statement. That's what I liked about listening to Gretz, Gretzky too, is it's, it's a different perspective. And, and of course, if a question was asked him in a different way, maybe he wouldn't have answered it that way. But I really do like that because, you know, someone can rub you the wrong way and it's just, they rub you the wrong way. But yeah, but who are they hanging out with? What, like, what's the environment? What, uh, what's it like at home? Um, you know, someone changes their diaper every day and tell them how great they are and they come across that way or is it really rough at home and they come across very abrasive or whatever. But when you're around leaders, and this is why leadership is very important when you're around good people, and that's what I said, books are my best friends because they, they're the ones that teach me a lot of life, right? And, and who I hang out with, you know, if I hang out with five idiots, I'll be one. Yep. So it, it, when people recognize that, that's where the biggest changes come. And recognize it and they want to be different. And they and, and then, if, of course, if you want to be a hockey player, you know that that attitude has to change. And that's part of it. it uh, it's a motivating factor, right? Yeah. Well, and that, some people never do change. That's right. Obviously. But having said that, if you're a kid that you identify the problem, you need to know that you can change. It will take work and it will take time, but you're not stuck and I've mentioned this, I used this example about myself before. So when I was in high school and coming out of high school, I was known for being a bit of a hothead. So yeah. I had like some snap yeah. to me where I would just like unreasonably angry yeah. about stupid things that don't yeah. matter. Yeah. And my family still kind of holds me to that because yeah. they remember that about me. Yeah. And I haven't been, I haven't had a... You're not that guy no, at all. Like since before I was, yeah. before I was 20 years old, like yeah. that was the last time yeah. I had any of those kind of episodes where I would like, freak out about nothing. And now people that meet me now don't even know that about me. Yeah. And they would say, so like, so my Christine, for example, she doesn't know that about me. Like, so sometimes when, never seen it. if we're, if we're talking about, you know, th- old stories about where I did something stupid or whatever, like she'll sit there and listen and like laugh, like... I can't like, yeah. she can kind of see that, that I would have that in me to be able to do that, but yeah. that's not part of my personality yeah. now. And so it's, that's just an example of like, you can change. And I was an adult as an adult. I did that. Yeah. And as a kid, it's even easier to change. So if you have a bad, a bad habit or you're not great at skating or shooting or whatever the skill is, or, or it's an attitude problem where you need to have you like, you freak out about nothing, you have bad body language, you're smacking your stick, you know, you're selfish. You're always worried about your own success over you know the success of everybody together or whatever it is those things you can actually change those things and that's why i really liked that answer when he was asked the question because that'll give kids especially it can give you some hope where you don't need to compare yourself to whoever is around you right now it's just just know that you can take steps to change and people will recognize that the adults that are watching you will recognize that the scouts will recognize that they'll see that you're not a hopeless case or whatever, yeah. you know, if you're good enough, like you can change. And that's why you see guys. Or that, someone steps in your life. Like, let's say a scout watches you for the first time. He doesn't have the memory of what it was before. If you made a change already. That's right. Yeah. Right? They don't so, say, well, I don't see that. Well, and that's why you see guys that have terrible attitudes. They'll get yeah. chance after chance after chance. Yeah. If they're good enough, like Evander yeah. Kane is my favorite example. Yeah. And he's just starting to run out of rope now, Yeah, maybe. you know, and he still might get another, he still might, he still might another, sign. Right. Still might not make another million. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, you can see that people are willing to give you chances. People are willing to to hope and to help you try to change if you yeah. decide that you want to change. So you, and you can do that if you want to. That's why I, I really like that. Again, For I recommend me, the best example that. I've ever seen is myself. Yeah. You know, we talked just the other day about some of the my youth and where I've come from. 
and I, I said this, I think, on a podcast before, that one of my best friends, we saw each other five years ago for the first time in 20 years. We're best, best, best friends. Played, he, he lives in Colorado now, and we played hockey together, and he played pro, and great, great guy. He hasn't changed. And when he, he was doing some following of my stuff, and, you know, like the common friend that we have here is very successful in hockey. And we met, and he he looked at me and goes, you're like, you're successful now. And I go, I don't know. Like, I'm doing good. Yeah, like, like that's how I said. Yeah, yeah, I'm having fun, man. Like, things are good. He goes, yeah, but you got this, you got this, you got this. I go, yeah, yeah, I love it. Like, yeah. it's great. Yeah. I wasn't thinking much of it. And he goes, but Andy, you were, I didn't want to say the word, you were. Um, yeah. I said, yeah, but is that what we're going to hold ourselves to? I said, God, thank God that I didn't get stuck with that label the rest of my life and continue on. That's right. I, I recognized that I needed help. Not, guys, there's nothing bad here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I needed help just to be a, a, a functioning human. Yeah. To be able to talk to people. I was insecure. I was, I came from like a different, um, di- different, different world. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have a lot of confidence in all these different things. I was a, always a nice person and stuff, but it was disguised. Like my six, like I, I, I was going through life as a fake, if I can say it that way. Yeah. Like trying to be something that I wanted to be, but I didn't know how to do it. I immersed myself in books and reading and a, a hardcore fix myself program for years. Yeah. And then when people look at you, when some an old friend says, well, you're pretty sharp now. Like you got a lot of shit going on. It's like, yeah, because I made a change. Yep. Yeah. And, it t- it t- and <laughs> man, knowing your ba- and people that have no idea, like yeah. the background that we're talking about with you. And it's like, that's why I have so much respect for you. Mm-hmm. It's not just your professional career. Yeah. It's just like dig, being able to dig yourself out of the hole yeah. because you were resourceful with what you had. Yeah. Like you were dealt a shit hand, man. Like in, you so, had a, in some ways. In some, in some ways. ways. Right? And and much much worse than most people. And you Maybe. could... Whatever. Yep. And, but you you found a way to dig out of the hole because, because this whole theme of what we're talking yeah. about today, you had a brain to try yeah. to dig yourself out of the hole. Yeah. And that's what I'm, I want to come back to with... with all of these topics, whether it's the, the Gretzky yeah. point I just made, the social media stuff, whatever, is like you need to have a brain. You need yeah. to be resourceful. You need to evaluate resources. Yeah. And you need to have you need to have that capability or you're going to get in a hole and you're going to be stuck in the hole and you're not going to know how to yeah. solve a problem to get out. Yeah. You know, So it's, it's really important. So again, yeah. just if people, if, I have that, that uh, interview with Gretzky linked on the on the website if you're interested in that you should watch it it's it's pretty yeah. good it's only like it's not even an hour i don't think no it's i think it's 40 minutes. minutes yeah yeah it's pretty good excellent so that's that part yeah now i'm going to switch to the last part because this kind of goes along with our evaluating resources thing we had a question um unless you have something else you want to share nope. before i go there okay nope. we had a question uh, a guy messaged us and i wanted to finish on this one because it's a good it's a good topic a guy was asking us about prep schools yeah so um he was just kind of asking for our thoughts on prep schools and it's starting to get trendy and popular in, yep. uh, in Ontario and in Canada. Yep. Cause in the States, like you were saying the other day, it's, it's always been yep. more of a thing over there because people pay to go to private schools and yep. stuff like that. So I don't know if you want to take it on that or you want me to give a little bit more hmm. detail on it. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I was never really familiar with the prep school thing. In fact, but I remember when it was around my draft year, um, couple guys like Jeremy Roenick got drafted first round to the Chicago Blackhawks out of the Thayer Academy. Well, I'm like, what the hell is that? I've never heard of it. It was a prep school and, and guys do get drafted out of right, out of the, right to the NHL out of Academy. So I, that was the first time I've ever heard of it. Now I didn't, I didn't come from money, so I didn't know what an Academy was. I thought like police Academy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was a funny movie. That's yeah. what I thought Academy <laughs> was. But so the question was, are they beneficial? Is that what it was or our thoughts it was, on it? It was, it was just kind of in general. Like, what do you think of it? Yeah. Do you think it's worth going there? How do you evaluate? And okay. then he asked if we had any resources to look at or whatever okay. about it. So, okay. So I, I I'll pretty general. I said, yeah. yeah. So <sighs> it's number one to me. This is, it's interesting. Let me say the, the good things about it first. Okay. Yep. I think, I think I'm not, I may be very wrong, but I think these academies slash private schools were started like the established ones, Shattuck St. Mary's. It's old. Right. Thayer Academy. These things, these ones in Massachusetts and Connecticut and New York, they're, they're old established ones in Canada. I don't really know a lot. I know there's Ridley college in, uh, in uh, the Niagara St. Catharines area. I know there's bishops in Montreal. I know there's St. Andrew's college in, uh, 
the Toronto area. There's St. Mike's. That's a, more of a school, I guess. Out west, I don't know a lot of them. Uh, but let's yeah, just say point. let's just yeah. say there's some. Ontario hasn't been a big, big, big hockey uh, uh, hockey player manufacturer from prep school schools, I believe. Okay. Yep. So with these old established ones, I think the concept was some people have like it's a business, man. It's a business. Don't let's let's not bullshit ourselves and say we're we're trying to educate our youth. I mean that's part of it, but it's a business. And we'll give you the best schooling, blah, 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 blah. Live on residence. Uh, you know. In order to do that, you need a lot of money. That's why they're in Massachusetts and upstate, New, like yeah, yeah. Rich, rich, richer areas, and right? Yep. So you need money to go to these things. So that's number one. You would go to a private school to get better education. I think along with that, you had athletics, right? And you had your sports teams and all that stuff. I think it started off as, especially in the United States of America, <laughs> it's it was another a feeder system to the colleges. Yeah, that's a great. That sounds good to me. Yeah. The only problem I see with that being a kid or being my family, I can't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't go. Right. I, my my dad was a butcher. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't Ain't go. Sorry. Yeah. So, but nonetheless, what I, what I think of the concept? I think the concept's phenomenal. I think that if you can take your sport, okay, let me dumb it down now. So now, what I do know in Canada. So, like, the American kids listening to this, it might be totally off from, yeah, what, your experience. from, yeah. from what I know or, or the Canadian way. And then the out east, out west, there might be different academies than there is in Ontario. I can only talk about what I know. So, the established ones, I think they have, like, good roots, and I think that you need money. I, I believe there's some scholarship availability, I'm sure, a yeah, little bit. Financial aid stuff, yeah. So... That's number one. The newer, the newer ones popping up, in my opinion. No, let me say this. The concept of it is phenomenal. Even the smaller ones that are starting out. If I could take, so I, I would say, if I could build a business, Eric Well, when I were talking about this, if we could build hockey all over again, what I would like to see it happen is exactly what they do in soccer. So you've got the big Liverpools and the Barcelonas and all these things, and they start recruiting kids when they're young. If you're the best of the best, we're, we'll. We'll pay you. We'll pay for your school. We'll develop you for the rest of your life. We own you. We own your rights, and you'll get paid. And it, with the day that you're not good enough, well, we could sell your rights to someone else, or you're just not good enough. Yep. I I actually like that because now you're in their system. And you're learning their system. Their coaches are all on the same board. You know, yep. you're you're just going to be one of them. So I like that system the best. So I think the next system after that would be the private, private school academies, school. right? Mm -hmm. No drafts. No bullshit. Right. So the academies, I like because you get up and you go to school. Everything can be done within a school day. You can go home at night and relax. Providing it's good. But the, the concept itself is good. I don't know how high end, and I've seen guys get drafted in the OHL from some of them. Some spent a year or two developing there. I don't know how high end the school is if we call it like an elite level school. You're talking it about doesn't like, matter. You're talking about like the academic part of the school? no no the, the the high level hockey hockey yeah right. the academics well i could flip a coin you can go to a school that that's it's for real you can go to the other ones and it's it's, it's so you can get hockey yeah, players it's or, or yeah, athletes yeah. it's pretend there's right. a lot of pretend out there right so and i would even say that even the established ones who know how who knows how serious they are about either right the other thing about a lot of the academies is they have team a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p <laughs> like how many teams does a team need right is it really development? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's it's like it is what it is. It is what it is. But anyways, the concept of of of, of it is phenomenal, because in Ontario, in, in most of Ontario except for Toronto, Toronto doesn't necessarily have borders, right, or or, or restrictions on where you have to play. Yep. For the most part of Ontario, if you live in, let's say, London, Ontario. You have to play for the London Junior Knights, and if you live on you know on the other side of the street and it's it's Elgin County, then you have to play for Elgin. Unless yeah. you get cut, then you can go. Well, that that restricts you, and then what that what that does is it keeps the minor hockey organizations uh, in control of you. Yeah, and I don't really understand why the there's good and bad to that. Yeah, uh, but if you're stuck playing for this team because you live on this street, and the coaching and the whole th th system is 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 brutal. Or that year just happens to be brutal, then you're stuck with it. Yep. So then you have to eat a shit sandwich, I guess, right? Yep. And, and deal with it. So I think from the pri private academy side, I think there's a, there's the, the model of it's fantastic. I think the uh, if you have a good program, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great. 
I think there's a lot of, a lot of good things. Now, my my question is always goes back to this is what is the intent of going to a private school? Right? Because if I can play like just being reasonable, if dollar for dollar it's the exact same, if I can play for this school or play for youth hockey and the quality of hockey and everything's the same, well, yeah, I'd go to that for sure. It makes sense to me. To the private school or to Yeah, if it, everything's to... equal. Everything's, everything's equal. equal. Right. It just makes sense. You can wake up, you go to school, you have your practice, you're with like-minded people most likely. It makes sense. If the yeah. if the hockey, if it's the, same. If the development is still hockey. the same, then... Yep. We, so, but my my question is basically intent. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So in, intent on the part of who? Parents or player? Or? Here's my quote. Okay. <laughs> in households, <laughs> no, I start it this way. There are motivated parents and there are motivated players. Ah, yes. But very, very seldom do they live in the same house. And what I mean by that, obviously, yep. I don't have to explain it to you, but... So many times we see motivated parents where the kids are not motivated. And when the motivated parents are making decisions and pushing and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So um, what is the intent? Is it mom and dad making this decision to, 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 to get them to something better than what Aaron Ekblad did? Yeah. <laughs> or Matt Pumple or Zach Cassian, like, are you, is your son that much better that we need to get him a different program? Yep. Right? That, that's what I mean by intent. And is it your intent? So the other thing that I find, and this is not like, listen, I, I totally, totally understand that there's some places out west and out east in, in, in Ontario that actually have really good programs. And it's a just a, it's a good step. Instead of pl- maybe playing minor midget or major midget, you're in your school and you play. And maybe you can do both. I don't know. But... Like Gary Roberts' son just did it. Went, uh, he's with Hamilton uh, Bulldogs now. He was at St. Andrews. Chris Draper's son went there. You know, but it costs money. Yeah. So it's to me, it's the intent. So what I find is that, and this is like, I know this can go a lot of ways with people, but I'm just being very honest and very, and, and I'm I'm saying what I see in Ontario, but it's it's I know it's probably relative, maybe in a different aspect all over the place. First of all, if you're playing, it doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't matter where you play from the hockey development side. Because if you're a good hockey player, they will find you. And we've said this a million times. So if you're playing for the the, the, the Chatham Cyclones or the Windsor Junior Spitfires, or you're playing for the Toronto Marlies or the uh, Honey Baked, Detroit Honey Baked or Chicago Mission, if you're good, you will be noticed and you'll be found. Okay? If you're playing for... Thayer Academy or Ridley College, if you are good, you, they will know They will know who you are, period. So that washes itself out. Yep. Okay? So the intent is what I see most of the time, This just, when someone in, in this area is getting to that minor bantam, bantam, minor midget, and they're not getting the attention, let's say, from scouts yeah, and people in the want, press yeah. and the stuff that they like, what happens is there's got to be something wrong with the system. So yeah. what happens when there's something wrong with the system, the coach isn't very good, so they think, that the, 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 they need better players, they need to move away, they need all these things that, that they, because it's not their kid's fault or he's good, people just don't see it. That's when they start looking at other avenues because there's something wrong with this system. And that's where I think the intent is like, okay, like, now you're just you're just making you're just making work for yourself. Like it's you're not being true to yourself. You're intent. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. The other side is that people say, "Yeah, but I, education is very important to me." And this the funny thing is, is I see I've seen so many parents talk right out of their ass. Oh, dude, I was just gonna They're, say, call bullshit on that. <laughs> Yeah, I call bullshit. I on see that people sure. that go to some of the academies, and yeah. I think they're good. Like I do, I do. I think they're really. I think they're good, but I see some of them go that they say schools number one, where the academy is not good. Mm-hmm. The education, they don't give a shit. It's about playing hockey. It's about. But really, what the parents are saying, and I've seen it. They've, some parents have said to me, "Well, we just decided to go because they can get more ice." So you're telling me schools number one, but you want more ice. That's the that's the reason. Right. I, I was speaking to one of uh, someone last year in the pandemic, and. 
school's number one. It was com- complaining about the practices were too late for this team because it's too late. Like the kids got to go to school, and then he 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 messed up. Not thirty seconds later, he goes, "Yeah, I got him going to." Uh, uh, the reason he was so tired is because he was going up a couple no- hours north to work with his agent on Wednesday nights. Then he had w- late Thursday practice, late whatever practice. Plus, he's got school when they only have two courses during the pandemic time. And one of his one of his courses in school was hockey class with just anybody that could put on a pair of skates. So you're telling me school is the most important thing? I I don't think it is because your actions prove differently. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So as far as the prep schools and stuff goes, or practice, or uh, what do you call them? Academies. Yeah, the, the academies. There's go. <laughs> I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue. But if you think that that's going to be the thing that develops you, it's not. Yeah. It's not the, the it's not the system that will develop you. It's you. Mm-hmm. You're either good enough or you're not. And and for some players, it's the best thing they could ever do because yeah. they're 17 years old and they're just coming into stride and the hockey's pretty good. Yeah. And they're at a, an academy. They're skating and they're getting the workouts and all that kind of stuff. It's an expensive. It's expensive though. Right. And for me, that's the no, that, that'd be like I can't do it. I, I personally can't do it or not yeah. willing to do it. Well, I think that the what the default position should be is you have to evaluate what the quality of the academy is. Like case, we ca- talked yeah. about this yesterday, like a case by case basis. Like not, it's not just good to go to an academy because it's an academy. Right. Right. So you have to look at you know there's some bigger name ones that you were talking about, and if you can afford to do that. That's the other part too, right? Is like I find a lot of people that might might be willing as parents, they might be willing to put a strain on themselves yeah. financially to get their kids to go to one of these academies. Yeah. And it's like that's not it's just not necessary. Like it's not necessary even if it's better, even if it is a better opportunity, let's say. Right. It's not necessary. Yeah. Like you can do that because you want to or whatever, but like you said, it doesn't really matter where you play. If you're good enough, you're good enough. So what my my perspective on it is, if you have the choice to go to an academy, f- the first thing is like it's got to be a good academy. Like they have to have a good program. They have to have proven to have. But it's like any team you go play yeah. for, right? Or any choice you make, yeah. you want it to be something that's good quality. So just because there's an academy down the street doesn't mean it's good to go there because it's an yeah. academy and they'll get three extra hours of ice. Yeah. So as an example, they, they, there's a bunch of them now in our area. Yeah that are more kind of in tandem with regular school. And the from the hockey perspective, they're not good. Right? So no. so you're if you're a triple A hockey player, now you also go to this school that has hockey class, that ice that you're getting at hockey class is trash. It's the worst thing you could do. So so all it is is it's bad habits. You're not learning anything. It's not helping you with hockey. It's too much. Yeah, it's it's an extra skate effort, focus, and energy that you don't need to be spending. Yeah. So these are more the questions you need to ask yourself. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to go to this academy thing and I'm just going to do this, and this is my hockey now, that's one thing. And granted, you can afford it, and it's not an unreasonable move to, that you need to make. Like then that's one thing. That's fine. But it doesn't. It's not just by default. Like all all academies are good. Or no, and it's and, 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 and to our point, not all are bad. Right. Or it depends. Or yeah, yeah. It, it's not like I'm not even being fifty fifty on this. Like I think they're great. Yeah. If you can afford it and that's your lifestyle, I think it's great. But if the intention again, yeah. If it's because you want a better education, and hockey happens to be part of that there, and it's mm-hmm. a good fit, cool. If it's because you are thinking it's a better opportunity for hockey because people just don't get you. Then you're, this is probably not the best. Mm-hmm. But and then and, and again, you could, because people say it's like an academy, it's a it's a name. Does that make it good? I've seen people work at them like it's like I wouldn't let you around anyone in my life, right? Let alone be a one on one teacher with yeah. it. <laughs> and I'm not yeah. saying like creepy kind. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you're an idiot. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're not an example of anything I want my son to be, um, or my my family. But but speaking of that, here's just another side tangent. I think people have to look at a lot. The selling features of a lot of things, it's 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 very funny, right? Like even in a, in a hockey school, a lot of people say, that, well, what's your ratio of teacher to student ratio? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what the, what does it matter? Like yeah. as long as it's not 300 to two. Right. Right? Yeah. But it's like you don't, you, you, what, what is, I understand the concept, like if there's too many kids, not, but someone could run, a, I can run a phenomenal program and I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do. And there's 25 kids and just me. And they're going to get a ton out of it, than, uh, more out of it than a one-on-one session with someone else. 
Yep. Or even maybe even with me. Mm -hmm. So people get dis fooled by small numbers. So like even in and, and like, you know, some of the things, even OHL teams say that, you know, we got small numbers so the kids can be in a class of a four to one ratio. Like, well, where's the benefit to that, honestly? Right. So, I, uh, yeah, miss, I don't know how to do this. Okay. And because I play for the team, well, that's the answer. And then where's the struggle? What did you actually learn? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas you're, and, and, and you're, and, and, and the other thing is you're different. Like, what's wrong with going to a regular school and being like a normal person? You have to go to a school where you have to wear a college shirt every day and, you know, and I'm not saying it's yeah. bad. I'm just saying, like to me, those are things that I not for me, man. So, so we were. I used this example yesterday. So, I, this comes back to again the same theme. Like you have to be able to evaluate the resource and evaluate the quality of where you're going. Mm -hmm. So, example I was using yesterday is I, there was a dad in here, and he was talking to me about which trainers around the oh. county are good for which skill. Yeah. So, so he mentioned the name of one of these guys who's a really good skater. So I, you and I were talking about it yesterday yep. and I said, okay, so how good of a skater is he? So compared to me, so I'm a decent skater. So yeah. if he, if, is he better, a better skater than I am? And you said, yes. He's a better so, skater. No, but no, no, no <laughs> but, but my point yes. of this is like, okay, so he's a good skater. Okay. Does this mean he can teach skating? Not at all. No. Okay. So the example that I gave you is Alexander Ovechkin is really good at one timers. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't speak English, man. Yeah. He speaks English, but you get my point, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? It doesn't make him a good teacher because no. he's good at taking a one-timer. No. So now because this dad thinks that this guy's a really good skater, he's who I should go to for skating. Yeah. And that's not how you evaluate quality. That's no. not how you evaluate who's good at what. It's like the bodybuilder. So because the bodybuilder's super jacked, does yeah. that mean that he's the guy that should train me? That's right. No, because he might not have the knowledge. He might just have better genetics yeah. or t taken better drugs than you or yeah. whatever the reason is that he looks like that. Yeah. That doesn't translate to knowledge. So you yeah. have to evaluate the quality of what you're doing and where you're going. Yeah. So this plays back into that when you want to do the academy thing, right? You have to be able to, to actually look at what you're doing. So if they have one coach and there's three different teams and he coaches all the teams and you're like, well, that's not enough coaches. Well, what if he's the best coach on yeah. earth? And what if <laughs> it's not a problem yeah. for him? What if it's not an issue? Yeah. I know. Right. What if he can do it? Yeah. So it's not just there's not just like these default questions that yeah. you ask. Like it always comes down to that analysis, that critical yeah. thinking about what what is the actual thing you're going to get from where you go. Yeah. You know, the other side for me is as I'm just thinking about this is I'm so I'm so conscious of this stuff because I understand, I guess, hockey and what it, what it takes and what do, you, what do you have to do to get there. And if you have to pay a whole lot of money to be a hockey player, then it's I don't know. To me, it's a red flag. But I'm not saying don't go. I, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't even know how to say this properly. It's, it, it is, you're saying it depends. That's it, what you're, I, that's it what totally you're depends. It's always like, it like depends, The intent man. again. The yeah. intent is, is what do you want out of hockey? Or yeah. what do you want out of school? If you say school is the most important thing, then the hockey is a secondary decision. Yeah. It might be a benefit that you play for the private school and school is your thing. But if you say hockey is your number one priority, then okay, then what's your intention now? Your, if your intention is... Or where's the root of your intentions? And if it's because you had a raw deal somewhere and you think the system is broken and uh, people don't recognize you for who you really are. And if I pay $50,000 to go to the school and they have connections. Yeah, right, right, right. And the, yeah. like, because this is the sales pitch, right? This is the sales pitch in all of hockey. When people tell you that this is what I'm going to do for you, like if, you, if someone comes up to me and says, if I skate with you, Andy, like it's not a sale. I don't sell it. How much? It's expensive. See ya. Yeah. I don't sit there and say, well, yeah, but I'll do this and I'll do that. It's not going to happen, man. Yep. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing hockey, it's the same thing. Like this, the sales pitch, right? Like you're going to get connections. No, you're not. And if they are, they're so, I've seen, so like, for example, I heard like years ago, there was a, a spring tournament where all the scouts go and they bring yeah, all yeah. the scouts. That's my favorite. I love that. <laughs> in July. Yeah. Well, Freaking first joke. of all, you might get some, or how do they get there? Scouts don't work in the summertime. Oh, well, the guy made so much money that it's a pretty good possibility that he said, hey, Andy, with the Sudbury Wolves, can you wear your Sudbury Wolves jacket? Or I, let's say I scout for whatever, or I'm part of it. I'll give you 300 bucks for the weekend to show up just to scout. Oh, okay. Sure. Right? Yep. Like, what are the intentions? Anyways, when there's money involved... And when someone is selling you the hockey dream, yeah, I don't know. It's you just like got to be careful. Even, even with the agents, right? Yeah. Even with the Same agents, thing. I can do this. I can do this for you. No, you can't do diddly shit yeah. until I'm a really good hockey player. 
Mm -hmm. And then I don't need you now. The only thing I need you for, not even really, is to do the contract. Yeah. But I can get my uncle to do that or my lawyer friend. I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, so, anyways, so am so, I beating this? What's that? Am I beating this too much? No, no, no. No, okay. but this this is good because it comes down to, again, it depends. It's always a case by case thing. There's not just a one answer. So I want to like kind of summarize our point basically. Yeah. So if the question is, should I go play at a private school? The answer basically is one. You have to evaluate the quality. Well, first of all, why are you doing it? Yeah, that's, why are you doing that's number one. It? Number yeah, one, why? why do you want to do that? What do you think you're going to get? Yeah. That's the first question. Second question is, let's say the answer is yes, and I'm doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So then second question is, you need to evaluate the quality of the school that you're going to. Is 100%. it provide, what is it, what are you getting? Does it have a good reputation? Does it have good coaching? Does it produce good players? All those kind of questions. That's, that's number two. And then maybe before even both of those questions, does the kid want to? Well, that's the that's what I was saying. That's, motivated parents, motivated right? So kids. like, so this is this is actually should be number one. So if you're thinking, okay, like maybe we'll go to a private school that's four hours away or three hours away or whatever. It's like, does your kid want to do that? Yeah. Right. So kids don't generally want to move away from home when they're fourteen. Oh, by the way, if you go to an academy for hockey and you're less than fifteen or fourteen years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, and this is what I'm saying, right? Like, so if you're a 14 year old kid, like you just want to play hockey and be a kid, man. You don't, you don't even, so we, <laughs> we were talking, we had one kid in here the other day and he's, he's a, he's a younger guy and we were talking to him and his family and the fa the parents had a bunch of good questions cause their mom and dad. And the whole time we we're talking and sitting here, the, ki the kid's just sitting there. He's got nothing to say, man. He's a kid. He just wants to be a kid and play hockey. Yeah. Right. So before you send your kid off to army camp for hockey, yeah, yeah. just uh, does the kid actually want to go? Well, that's, like that's that's like the first question that you should be asking, right? Or do you want him to go? Well, this is my you know? that's my quote. So so that's right. So th that's kind of how I would lay out whether you're making that decision yeah. or not, right? So does the kid want to? What's your intention for him going? And then what's the quality of the school yeah. versus your local team that you would have played for yeah. if you don't go? You know. So that's yeah. kind of the way that I would. I would. Yeah. I don't know any objections to that at all. No, and and, and again, I don't want to sound like it's I'm no, don't go or yes go. I I have, I'm talking from a hockey perspective. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Who cares? Because yeah. Eric, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna be a great player in major midget, minor midget, or junior B. Good, and if you're gonna be that same player in. Uh, in an academy, and if you're not in midget or junior B, then you won't be there. Right. And if you skip that because you think a private school is better, if you're a phenomenal hockey player there, then you're gonna move on somewhere. Yeah. So it does. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I just I, the part that bothers me is how things have gotten way out of hand, and it just is what it is. It bothers me. It bothers me to my core. Uh, what do you mean out of hand? In which way? Just like. The out of controlness of throwing money around to do well, stuff kind of thing. Well, no, no, no. Well, out of, out of control parents, out of control minor hockey systems, out of control people trying to make a buck every which way they can off of other people. The and and then what bothers me on the other side of it is that people that just you can't read it and you're, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's it's like, yeah. but I I just I can sit back and go wow, and it's not because I'm that smart. I mean, I'm not the dumbest guy and I'm not the smartest guy. I'm somewhere in the middle. Right, but it's it's like I you should be able to look at your son and say he's <laughs> wow. If he's not like wow, this kid is really good. Then there's there's nothing to talk about, you know. There's yeah. nothing to talk about. And if he's not, then you shouldn't have to worry about who's training him, how he's getting trained, what's what academy of this academy of that. Like this is not a it's not a point. Yeah, you know, and and you don't have to worry about talking to people about the agents, but then the parents, for some reason, just, I don't understand it, dude. Yeah. I don't understand. But, um, but yeah, it, it bothers me to look at the whole thing, but it happens all the time. Yeah. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. But then people say, recognize it and they do it anyways. And they can complain, but they still continue to do it. It's like, wow. But this is my point. Motivated parents and motivated kids. Parents are very, very, very motivated to get their kids to the next level for some reason. But it's not up to the parents to get them there. Yeah. It's the kids got to want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's just, right. it's a, it's a, it's an interesting concept, but, um, 
I would so in in a long long haul of things. I would love to see like if I if I could design a prep school or the prep school world, I think it would be great if you can if you can have everybody that plays hockey just pick a school that they want to go to. If it was relatively inexpensive or or it was sponsored by affordable or whatever. A huge like let's just say the a, a huge company in every city had a an academy or not every city even and they put their programs together. I, I think that would be the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. With like minded people going to school, ho- hockey and yeah, that's like all the concept spot. Of it, it would be get, phenomenal. Yeah, it'd be like concept. Barcelona and Windsor. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You belong to someone and work up the system. But that's a long, long ways away. Who knows if that'll ever happen and I don't think in my lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think I hope that was that was kind of helpful. If there's any other like more specific questions, if people want to follow up on that, that that's fine. Those are just our our thoughts. Um, so, <laughs> it is your thoughts. <laughs> it is our thoughts. But I'm like, I like, I just I, the thing that I wanted to, to to get across again more and more and more is just like, just can we just play hockey? That's because there's no decision making. Like there really isn't. If you wanna, if you wanna, if the kid wants to learn, he's gonna find a way to learn. And, and just go play, man. Just go play. There's not these critical decisions to make when you're 14 years old or 15 years old. And if there is, you're freaking well going to know. You're, you're going to know because everyone's going to be at your door. Not Buckshot that works at the skate shop. Yeah. And some guy, all over people all over the world, big names that you've heard of before, we got at your door, and then you're going to have to maybe make a decision. But even then, it's not that critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Cool. Uh, anything else you want to close on here? Are you all good? It's done. Good. good to go? Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody.